Hey guys, Wet Movie One back here again for another Blu-ray DVD update video for you guys today. It's been about two weeks or so since my last one. Got a big old stack of goodies here to talk to you guys about today. Also, my mom should be popping in a little bit later on with her guest reviews this week. Please hit that like button. Drop a comment letting me know what you guys watched recently that you think I should check out. But guys, first up from uh, Shout Factory is Dead Shadows here on Blu-ray. This movie was absolutely killer. It's, it's pretty much about this boy named Chris who witnessed his parents getting brutally murdered about 11 years ago on the night Haley's Comet was passing by the Earth. Now he's a bit older now. He's trying to put his past behind him, but yet he's still kind of haunted by it. He's working as a computer technician, helping people out with their computer problems, but now the Haley's Comet is coming back around the Earth again, and people in and around his city, his friends, his, you know, his, his random people on the street are acting really strange and like doing really creepy things and really freaking him out. He's starting to see images of his dead mother and he's going, what the hell is going on? And then that, that comet's coming by the earth and all this craziness starts happening. Weird creatures come out, people turning into zombies. This movie was absolutely killer. It kind of has that same vibe of, uh, you know, like all those other like zombie movies, kind of like, um... Attack the Block, it kind of has that kind of vibe to it, mixed with, uh, you know, Dawn of the Dead a little bit. I absolutely love this film. Highly recommend it. Picture quality, absolutely great. On this Blu-ray here, you get uh, making of special effects, deleted scenes, theatrical trailers. I didn't even know about this film until recently. I believe it was made in like 2012 or something. But I love movies like Attack the Block and Dawn of the Dead. And for you guys, man, all you horror fans out there, definitely give this one a chance. Absolutely fell in love with it and I think you guys will like it also. Okay, guys, next up is a documentary film I've been dying to see for the last couple of years now since I've heard about it being made. You guys all know there was a documentary that came out last year on DVD called Rewind This, a documentary about the VHS collecting culture and how there's a big resurgence, re resurgence in it now. But for you guys who don't know, that there was two documentaries made about the VHS collecting culture, and this is the other one, Adjust Your Tracking Here, the untold story of a VHS collector. And in this uh, documentary, takes you deep inside the mind of a, collect, a co of a collector like myself and people are being interviewed about their collections and talking about how obsessed they are ab about their collections and how sometimes they spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a rare, really rare VHS tape like it was called Tales from the Quad Dead Zone, how someone spent 600 bucks on a VHS tape not but a couple of years ago. I know I spent a lot of money on a VHS tape recently, like what, two or three years ago on a Young Dragons, the Kung Fu Kids like three and four, they were on VHS. They have they were they're like pal. They don't even play in my VHS player out here, NTSC or whatever. So I, I had to go to this place to get it transferred over to the right format so I can have it play in my player. Like I know how some of these people get obsessed with certain things because so do I. You guys all know I'm a collector. I have movies all over the place, and I think anybody that watches my videos that are that's in this DVD movie collecting community needs to check out this documentary here because you get interviews in here with real true collectors. Like some of them are a little over the top and say certain things that make me go, oh, oh, all right, I'm, I, hmm. You know what I mean? Like there's this one guy and one of the special features on here talking about Redbox and how he hates Redbox and how he wants everyone that uses a Redbox to get shot in the back of the head and die and how he wants to kill everybody that's ever used one. And I'm like, whoa, that's a little bit nutty. <laughs> you know, like I ain't gonna go that far and say that kind of stuff. But like this documentary goes really delves deep in to the VHS collecting culture and how this one guy had this interview with this one guy that has a collection, like a whole video store in his basement of his house, even with a blockbuster gumball machine in it and has an interview with him and video of it and of what it looks like in his house kind of like how I make videos on my collection there's stuff like that in this documentary that I think all you guys will absolutely love but definitely check out this website guys next to the title of this movie in the description box I have a link to where you can buy this movie because you can't get it on Amazon or any uh, you know all those big websites yet you have to get it directly from the, the filmmakers themselves but I recommend getting the VHS DVD combo pack here because you get the two you get the three disc 
uh, DVD edition and the extended cut of the film on VHS, which is about like 20 or 30 minutes longer than the DVD version, which I think is kind of cool to get people to actually watch the VHS version, you know? I think that's really badass. I believe it's suggestiontracking.com. Check out the link in the description box. Pick yourself up a copy of it because you can get it like this in the VHS DVD pack and the, just the regular DVD pack by itself and things like that. Definitely check this one out. I absolutely fell in love with it. I know, I know a lot of you guys out there that watch my videos would love it too. But guys, next up over here from a Universal is right along here on Blu-ray DVD combo pack starring Ice Cube and uh, Kevin Hart. I, you guys all know I love Ice Cube from the Friday movies and like Anaconda and stuff like that. And Kevin Hart from like Soul Plane and his stand-up comedy stuff. In this film, Kevin Hart, he, he works at a high school as like a security guard. He, his dream is to be part of like the police force and, you know, to fight crime and things like that. But he's always, he's just... He's always just like playing video games at home after after work and things like that. Never really going for his goal. But yet, you know, he wants to marry his beautiful girlfriend. But his beautiful girlfriend has a brother that's in the police force. It's kind of a hard badass played by Ice Cube. But, you know, then it's pretty much Kevin Hart trying to impress Ice Cube in this movie. So Ice Cube decides to take Kevin Hart on a ride along. On to see what kind of a day that police officers go through every day. And uh, it just turns into like a big hilarious action flick. Um, I absolutely love this movie. I love Kevin Hart and Ice Cube. I thought they have a nice little chemistry together. Uh, Kevin Hart, to me, is just probably one of the funniest guys out there right now. He's kind of like... The Eddie Murphy of the 80s to me a little bit, you know, like just his comic style. I can kind of see a little bit of Eddie Murphy in him a little bit. Um, I, I just got to say the Blu-ray here looks absolutely fantastic. There's a lot of special features on here. Definitely get the Blu-ray version because there's like six or seven uh, exclusive Blu-ray features that are on this disc here. Like extended and alternate scenes. Uh, you get like interviews on there with Kevin Hart and Ice Cube and stuff. Definitely check out Ride Along. Absolutely a hell of a lot of fun. I saw it once or twice in the movie theater. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Get your hands on a copy, guys. It's absolutely funny. But uh, next up over here is the Bagman here on Blu-ray. Starring Robert De Niro, Crispin Glover, and uh, John Cusack. John Cusack in this film plays a hitman. And his boss is played by Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro offers him this job to, to go collect this bag and bring it back to him. And this movie is pretty much the mission of John Cusack getting that bag and bringing it back to his boss and all the craziness that happens along the way. But there's one thing that John Cusack can't do is look inside the bag to see what's actually in there. And it's pretty much him trying to, you know, going crazy to try to, he wants to know what's in that bag but he can't open it or his boss is going to get him and things like that. That's pretty much the basis of the movie um I really wanted to get into it. It sound a lot. It sounds a lot cooler than it actually is. I really wish it was like a road movie, like him getting the bag and traveling, you know, across the you know across the country or something to bring the bag to his boss. But it's pretty much him stuck in a hotel room the whole time, or in this one little you know part of town the whole time while different things are happening to him. I, I really wish they really really went. They really went somewhere else with this film, but they really didn't. Um, the acting's fine. Robert De Niro has this really crazy hair in the movie. Chris McGlover plays like the owner of this hotel that's just really over the top. Anything pretty much Chris McGlover does, he brings his, you know, 100% to the role. And I always loved him in movies like Willard and, you know, Back to the Future and, of course, you know, Friday the 13th and things like that. But check out Bagman if it sounds interesting to you. I just really couldn't get into it. I love all the actors in it, but it just wasn't my... My cup of tea. I thought it was going to be a lot more than it was, you know? And uh, next up over here is a sequel to a movie that I absolutely love that came out like two or three years ago called Badass, starring Danny Trejo. And now we get Badass 2, Badasses, starring Danny Trejo and Danny Glover, the two Dannys. And in this film, it takes place three years after the original Badass movie. For you guys who don't know what happened in the original Badass movie, uh, Danny Trejo works at this hot dog stand. And one day, he's on the bus going home. And he sees this old man being messed with on the bus. And he, you know, he fights the young kid that's messing with the old man on the bus. And someone videotapes him and puts him on YouTube. And he becomes this instant, you know, celebrity for fighting crime on the streets. And then now in part two, he owns this like little, he owns this gym now and he's teaching kids how to, teaching kids boxing and things like that. And he, he befriends this one kid. He's kind of like gets really close with him until this one, until he finds out this one kid that he really loves 
get, get, gets involved in, in the drug game, gets murdered, and this movie's pretty much about Danny Trejo trying to find who killed his friend. And he brings along Dan, you know, Danny Glover along the way to the mission to kick the bad drug dealer's butts. And that's pretty much the synopsis of this film. It has the same amount of charm as the original badass film. Danny Glover just adds a really cool element to the mix of this one. Because Danny Glover is just an all-around badass anyway. Who you guys all know from like a Lethal Weapon films and Be Kind Rewind. Absolutely love Danny Glover and Danny Trejo together fighting crime. Absolutely love this movie. If you guys, you know, don't have never seen these movies, definitely check them out. They're a fun action comedy uh, kind of film. I, it's just really cool to see these two pairing up as a team going out kicking people's butts. You know, this is the ultimate expendables right here in my opinion. But that's badass two badasses. Give this one a chance guys. It's absolutely a lot of fun. Okay guys, next up from Kino is The Trials of Muhammad Ali here on DVD. This is a documentary film about the man himself, Muhammad Ali or Cassius Clay. Or, and in this film it talks about how he got into the religion of um, the, the Nation of Islam and how he changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali because he didn't want to be called Cassius Clay his slave name anymore and how he you know almost got drafted into the army but he contested and he said no I'm not gonna fight in this Vietnam War because I don't believe in what's going on these people you know in the you know the Viet Vietnamese or whatever didn't do nothing to me they didn't hurt me in any way why do I need to go over there and fight this war and it's pretty much him and how he didn't do that and how all this backlash happened to him for not going to fight to the war and how he almost got you know put in jail for for doing that and doing so and how he just stood up for his right to not want to do that and I absolutely fell in love with this documentary there's a couple of things the Nation of Islam and Elijah Muhammad were preaching back in the day that I I don't quite believe in you know, I mean, like, all white people are devils and things like that. Like, how that's what, you know, Muhammad Ali thought back in the day. But now, as he's gotten older, he doesn't think that anymore. But when he first got into the Nation of Islam, he was t he was talking about, like, oh, white people are devils and, like, things like that. But now, as the Nation of Islam as it has been progressing over the years, they don't th I don't think they think that anymore. But that was the only thing that made me go, what the f I, I ain't no devil. I ain't doing shit to nobody. I'm just a fat guy at home watching TV and movies. Shit. I don't, I don't cause no problems, <laughs> you know, it's not everybody, but uh, I, I, I really did enjoy this documentary because I really got into uh, Muhammad Ali from my dad, watch, always showing me old boxing matches like the, the Frazier match and it was called the Thriller in Manila or whatever it is, like he has all these, or used to have all these old tapes like he recorded off of television and things back in the day. I've always liked learning more about the man, but that's the trials of Muhammad Ali here on DVD. Absolutely fantastic documentary about the man himself. Alright guys, next up from Lionsgate is Date and Switch here on Blu-ray. It's about these two lifelong friends. They've been friends since the third grade, Michael and Maddie. And now they're in high school. They, they're still virgins. They're still trying to figure out what the hell they're going to be doing with that. They make a pact with each other to break up with their girlfriends and try to get laid before they graduate from high school. But in the meantime, one of the friends tells the other that he's gay and throws the whole thing out of whack. This movie kind of has a little bit of a vibe of uh, um, American Pie, a little bit just with you know people making a pact of trying to get laid before they graduate kind of thing. But this movie has so much more going for it. You know, it has these really two great friends that they've known each other for so long, and it's them just trying to deal with one another's problems and and how one of them that like, turns gay, but he's just still trying to you know, like you know process what he was just told and I absolutely fell in love with this movie um, I, I know a lot of you guys out there probably didn't don't know a lot about it because I don't think it got a big wide release in the movie theater but it has a nice like mellow com comic tone to it it's not it's not too over the top it is at, at some moments but it has this nice little like vibe to it that I absolutely fell in love with. The picture quality of this Blu-ray is absolutely amazing. This is one of those movies I could see myself revisiting, you know, maybe once or twice a year. That's how much I've actually fell in love with this movie. I don't want to say any really that much more about it because I don't want to ruin things about it. But you get, you know, a lot of, uh, you get Megan Mullally in there, who you guys all know from uh, Will and Grace. You get a lot of cool, you know, cameos in this film. Absolutely loved it. It's it, it, it's a great comedy film about friends. You know, I, I really did like this one. 
And uh, next up over here, you guys all know I love the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. But the, ser the series is still going on today, and it's called Power Rangers Mega Force. And uh, I I've never seen an episode of my life until I got this set right here. It's called Power Rangers Mega Force. The Great Dragon Spirit here on DVD. Uh, this set right here has four episodes of Power Rangers Mega Force in here. Um, absolutely kind of liked watching this because I've been a fan of Power Rangers or the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers when they first started uh, back in the early 90s. Absolutely loved this show. I have those other Power Ranger box sets that Shout Factory's put out. And this is Me Power Rangers Mega Force, which I've never seen an episode of in my life until I got this DVD set here and I gotta say watching Power Rangers now and comparing it to the the way it used to be it's the same but it's different it's not like how it used to be you know like it still has that like go go Power Rangers like a little bit in the background with some of the music and things like that but there's this the comedy element of it is not the same anymore like you don't get Bulk and Skull in there anymore I believe like uh, Paul Schreier the guy that played Bulk was in even in I think he was I think he was in Power Ranger Samurai, but yet he's not I don't think he's in Power Ranger Mega Force at least in the episodes I've seen and I he really brought a lot to the table when he was in the Power Rangers like him and Bulk and Skull like they really brought this cool comedy element that I really loved. It's still it's still put out by Saban and this one's like Lionsgate and everything and I I enjoyed it for what it was but it just didn't you know it didn't bring out the awesomeness factor like memories for me like the old school ones did you know but you get four episodes of Power Rangers Mega Force uh, in this set here and uh, ch check it out if you guys are into Power Rangers it, it is worth watching but to me loving the Power Rangers the Mighty Morphin one it just it just wasn't the same for me you know but uh, next up over here is a movie I had to get because I'm a super fan of Christina Ricci ever since like Casper, Now and Then, The Addams Family, all these other great movies that she's been in, Gold Diggers, The Secret of Bear Mountain. And this is her new film. I believe it was a Lifetime film or like, some, like one of those kind of channel films. And it's called The Lizzie Borden Takes an Axe. And this is a story about Lizzie Borden. If you guys don't know who Lizzie Borden is, she was a, girl, a lady that was accused of killing her parent, you know, killing her father and stepmother with an axe in the late 1800s and this is a like a bio like a biopic kind of story of what happened back in the day and uh, in, the, and in this movie you get Christina Ricci in the role of Lizzie Borden and you know going around like killing her parents and things like that and them going to court and trying to contest about you know contest of you know what happened and if it didn't happen or what really happened in the house and things like that Christina Ricci did a very good job uh, and you're playing Lizzie Borden in this film, but still, it did feel like a Lifetime movie. It was one of those made-for-TV kind of things, so it wasn't as graphic or as cool as it could have been if it was like a R-rated horror flick. But Christina Ricci is still on the top of her game. I, 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 I think Christina Ricci was probably my very first you know movie celebrity crush of all time you know and I've always I've always liked her in movies ever like I said ever since like Adam's Family and things but definitely check this one out it was very interesting gotta gotta get it to support Christina Ricci she's absolutely cool in this one but that's Lizzie Borden taking an axe was it great no was it cool to see Christina Ricci in a movie taking the axe to people's faces yes it was awesome but that's Lizzie Borden taking an axe here on DVD give it a chance if you're a fan of her and uh, next up over here is Cocaine Cowboys Reloaded here from Magnolia. And uh, this is uh, the third Cocaine Cowboys uh, documentary. If you guys didn't know, um, there was two Cocaine Cowboys documentaries that came out in the past. I remember watching them uh, at my Blockbuster when they came out. And uh, in this one, this just this, this, this tells you more stories about Miami and the drug trade. And, and they have interviews in here with drug traffickers and drug kingpins that telling their stories of what happened in, in the drug game in Miami in the 70s and 80s and things like that. Very interesting stuff. I've always liked the Cocaine Cowboys movies. They're always a little bit too long because this one's what, like 152 minutes long. And uh, But it's still cool to hear the stories about the drug game and how they can, you know, put the drugs on a boat and how easy it was to transport all these drugs into the United States without you know getting busted and things and of course sometimes they did it's just really cool to see the ins and outs of you know the drug traffickers in, in the 70s and 80s in Miami it was just really it, they're really interesting documentaries to check out and this is the third one with just you know more stories from the different people and things but definitely check this one out if you guys are into like the drug trade and things like that
that. I remember watching the first one, and like the first one, I had like the main drug kingpin they were focusing on was like this woman, and I'm like, whoa, this woman is badass, man! Like you know, like killing people for the, for her business and things like that. But this is uh, Cocaine Cowboys Reloaded. I, I I liked it for what it was, but it just it's just a bit too long. But if you guys are into like you know drug documentaries, definitely check this one out. Definitely worth watching. Hello, it's me again, just stopping by to put in my two cents worth. My first movie today is The Pirate Fairy, and it's about Zarina, who is a dustkeeper fairy, and she is captivated by the blue pixie dust and all its possibilities. And some of her wild ideas get her in trouble, so she flees Pixie Hollow and joins forces with the swashbuckling pirates on Skull Rock. And Tinkerbell and her friends embark on an epic adventure to find Zarina. And they go sword to sword with all the pirates of Skull Rock, especially a cabin boy named James, who turns out to be, well... I'm not going to tell you. You'll have to watch this movie and find out. And I really recommend that you pick this up. I just loved it. I love this Tinkerbell series that they have on the DVDs and Blu-rays right now. I watched it with my daughter. She loved it too. Okay, the next movie in my minuscule <laughs> viewing was The Good Witch's Garden. Uh, this was a Hallmark movie, and I'm guessing if it's Hallmark, it may have been made for TV. Uh, it stars uh, Catherine Bell and Chris Potter. And Catherine Bell plays Cassie, who is the owner of Grey House in the town of Middleton. And most of the townspeople think maybe there's something odd about her, because the garden club always notices she has such strange and unusual plants, and her garden is just beautiful. Well then, a stranger comes into town and proclaims legal right to be the owner of Grey House. Well, this puts the whole town in an uproar and, well, once again, I'm not going to tell you the ending. Now, if you'd like to watch it, that would be fine, but my feeling on this movie was that the story was just too simplistic. I mean, you know, in stories you have to, you know, a beginning, a middle, and an end. But you have to have, you know, conflict or character delineation or something. And this movie just really didn't do it for me. The actors were good. But just the story is... Huh? So, I mean, if you, you're curious, you can pick it up. I just don't like giving bad reviews. <laughs> anyway, last up on my collection, oh, this is great. Now, you know me and my TV series that I like. Well, look what I got. <laughs> the Dick Van Dyke Show. Oh, it's great. This special collection has 20 episodes featuring that TV icon and person that I love, Mary Tyler Moore. Oh, it's wonderful. I remember watching these back in the day. These are black and white, by the way, and that kind of dates me, I guess. But I really love this collection. There's great episodes. I mean, really, each episode is, is terrific. <laughs> and, of course, you remember the whole show is written by Carl Reiner, and he shows up in a few of the episodes, and he's pretty funny himself, and not to mention, of course, Dick Van Dyke. So, if you like Dick Van Dyke, Mary Tyler Moore, Carl Reiner, a cast of <laughs> thousands, I picked this up. I really, really love it. Thanks for stopping by. Alright guys, next up from Image Entertainment is The Suspect here on Blu-ray, starring Mackay Pfeiffer and William Sadler. In this film, William Sadler is the police officer, chief of this small town. Their bank has just been robbed, and of course Mackay Pfeiffer has never lived in that town in his life, and he's walking randomly down the street until the cops see him and take him in for questioning because he looks suspicious. And uh, Mackay Pfeiffer is like, hey man, I didn't rob this bank. What are you doing taking me in here? Are you, doing, are you, are you, are you taking me in because I'm black? You know, and then it's pretty much uh, 
William Sadler's character going, uh, no, no, I don't want to know who the hell robbed this bank. You've never been in this town before. You just look kind of weird, you know, that you're just covered in dirt and all this kind of stuff. And where the hell's, like, just trying to figure out who the hell robbed their bank. And it's the back and forth between the two trying to figure out, you know, who's telling the truth here and what the hell's really going on. I found this movie to be a nice little psychological thriller film. Um, it, it, I haven't seen Mackay Pfeiffer and you know, in the acting game in a while, and it's really cool to see him back. And William Sadler's always a badass, and in, uh, in flicks here, you guys will be really pleasantly surprised by it. This one's a high recommendation for a rental if you guys see it out there, like in your local video stores. Definitely give it a rent. It, it's it's really worth watching. And uh, next up over here is a really cool thriller anthology film called Locker 13, starring uh, Ricky Schroeder, Tatiana Ali, uh, Kurt, it was called Curtis Armstrong, who you guys all know from Revenge of the Nerds and things. This film's pretty much about this, this one convict guy who just gets let out of prison. He's trying to live his life right now, so he's trying to get his very his first job after he's got let out of prison. And he gets this one job at this place that reenacts westerns and things like that. And his boss is showing him around the work showing him around work, telling him about different items and the work and different stories about them. And then each little item that he talks about goes into one of the stories in this anthology thing. Like the first story is about these boxing gloves that are like sitting around the office and it goes into this one story about Ricky Schroeder, Schroeder uh, really wanting to be one of the best boxers in the world and how he can't find any gloves to fight this one guy at the beginning of his story so he's running around trying to find these gloves he hasn't paid his you know gym payments in a while so he doesn't have anything in his locker like everything is taken out of his locker until this one guy pops up mysteriously and says here here are some gloves and gives them these old timey like you know 50s or 40s kind of gloves and as soon as he puts them on he starts fighting with them every single fight that he has he kills somebody and it's pretty much him going I, I didn't want that to happen what the hell's going on and him trying to figure out what the hell just happened and where those gloves came from and things that was kind of a cool story there's also another story in here about a guy that's on a, on a ledge that wants to kill himself he's about to jump off to his death until this one guy stops him from, from that, and there's the back and forth between the two. That was one of the really cool shorts in this one. There's a lot of really cool shorts in here. They all revolve around Locker 13. When you see the movie, you'll, you'll get why, why it's called Locker 13. Absolutely fell in love with this one. I wish Tatiana Ali, you guys all know from Fresh Prince, was in it more. She only had like, what, a couple lines in it or something. I thought she was going to be in it more with her face on the box like that. But uh, that's Locker 13 here on DVD. Give it a chance, dude. It's a really cool thriller anthology film. I, I, I really liked it. And uh, next up over here is a film I really couldn't get into. I was kind of really turned off by it. Like, probably like half hour into it, I was kind of like, oh, I'm done with it already kind of thing, you know? But that is Holy Ghost People here on DVD. It's pretty much about this one girl. Her sisters went off to join this church or this cult or whatever. And it's pretty much just one, her sister trying to find her and bring her back home, you know, before something bad happens to her. And uh, it's her, you know, it's pretty much this one girl finding out where this this cult is and trying to get into it and find her sister and what happened to her sister to bring her back and all this kind of stuff. It was just kind of, I don't know, it kind of felt like it's been done before. Like I've seen movies or something that that deal with the same kind of you know subject matter. It didn't really bring anything new to the table for me. The acting was fine. The script was fine. Like every, everything was just, you know, fine. But it just didn't really keep my interest. It didn't really want me to keep watching it. It was kind of like I was watching it and then I'm like, uh, and then I started like you know like doing doing something else like on the computer or like writing or you know whatever it is I was doing just because it wasn't holding my interest right. But uh, that's Holy Ghost people here. If you see it out there, I, I I can't I can't recommend this one guys. But that's Holy Ghost people here on DVD. All right guys, next up is a horror film I've been kind of dying to see. I, I it's just because of the people that are in it because you get Daniel Harris. You get Eric Roberts and you get Felissa Rose in this film called Camp Dread. It's pretty much about this producer guy that's made these really cool slasher films, hit, you know, really hit slasher films in the 80s, like, like Sleepaway Camp that took place on a campground. And it's been 10, 15 years since he's had a hit. And he's trying to, like, bring back his career somehow by shooting this reality show, but that's based on people going to this camp and he's gonna you know put these kids in these situations that they're gonna get really hurt or injured in and turn that into a movie somehow and that's the basis of this movie this movie could have really been a lot better than it was the concept of it sounds a lot cooler than it actually is there's one thing in this thing that really pissed me off is that 
Uh, you, you get Daniel Harris here on the front box on the on the on the cover here. Yeah, she's only in the movie for like three minutes. Literally three minutes. It's like what? you could have put Felissa Rose on here because Felissa Rose is in throughout the whole movie. So is Eric Eric Roberts. And uh, I I kind of liked it a little bit for what it was, but the but when they come to like the slasher part when the kids are starting to get picked off one by one, like the gore wasn't up to par it wasn't really like surprising or to bring anything new to the table it was just kind of like uh, all right it was just quite it was just kind of cool to see Felissa Rose on a campsite you know like going around with the kids and things because I always liked her from sleepaway camp playing Angela and things like that I think she's always like hella cool and like like it was called a uh, Sla Sla slaughter party massacre or something or slaughter party I've always liked her in, in movies give this one a chance if you guys or if you guys like Felissa Rose and stuff like that, it's, it's cool to get it to support her. But the movie just didn't really do a lot for me. Like, I love slasher films, but it didn't really... I don't know. I, I just wasn't surprised by it at all. But that's Camp Dread here on DVD. And uh, last up, but not least on my update today from Uncorked Entertainment, is Hazmat here on DVD. It's pretty much about this, uh, what's it called, chemical plant that a long time ago killed a handful, a hundred, hundreds of people in this plant. But now, this reality show called Scare Antics, kind of like Scare Tactics, is, is in there now, filming this thing to scare, you know, unsuspecting people and, you know, you know play tricks on them for, for television. And these two friends bring their uh, other unsuspecting friend into this old chemical plant but they don't know that his father used to work at this plant and died in this plant and he has all these stories about this plant being haunted and all this crazy stuff still happening at this plant but yet he doesn't know that he's being filmed for this reality show to scare him but yet something really really goes wrong and turns everything turns every you know turns everything on their head and people start getting picked off one by one and they're just just all this craziness that happens from there um i found i found this movie to be a lot more fun than Camp Dread was, and uh, I gotta say, if you see it out there, give it a chance. It's, it's a fun little, you know, it's, it's a fun little slasher flick, a, a flick about, a, you know, about some somebody in, in in this mask here with an axe going around, you know, killing people. Is it a person? Is it like a entity? You have to watch the movie to find out. I, I I had a lot of fun with this one. Definitely check out Hazmat here on DVD. All right, guys, that's all I have to show you guys today for my Blu-ray DVD update video today. Please hit that like button, drop a comment letting me know what you guys watched recently, and if you like, if you like my videos, and I'll see you guys all next time. Woo! It's getting hot in here.